It is my pleasure to introduce Zach Barnes, who is the uh, publisher and president of the Topeka Capital Journal. He comes to us from the Log Cabin Democrat in Conway, Arkansas. And he's going to tell you more about his life story. So it's my pleasure to introduce Zach, and please welcome him. So uh, first of all, thank you so much. This is like a dream come true. I get to vote today, I get free pie and free food, and I get to talk about politics. This is like, this is, this is awesome. And I have almost an hour to do it, which is fabulous. So I'll be mindful of your time and we'll try to make this a, a good discussion. Uh, and, and it will be just that. What I'd like to do is this, tell you a little bit about my background because I think it will shape some of the ways that we approach things and the philosophy, um, but then also we'll talk about some of the things and the changes that we've made at the Capital Journal, foreshadow perhaps some of the additional things that are on the horizon, and then we'll open it up to questions, because I know a lot of times I don't cover the different things that are on your mind, and that way we can open it up for that. So a little bit about my background. I grew up in Columbus, Nebraska, and uh, I met my wife, Heidi, at York College. Um, we both went to school to become teachers. I was going to teach English and political science, <coughs> speech and debate and drama. She was going to teach, uh, well, initially elementary school, so not specific, but then went through, like I did, all of the grades and decided we probably didn't have the patience. <laughs> well, <laughs> we now have three children. My wife is essentially pregnant for six years. They're about 20 months apart. Uh, and now they're going into sixth grade, fourth grade, and third grade over at Jay Scheidler here in town. So we went through school, and we decided that that, at least for me, wasn't for me. We put my degree, my undergraduate degree, in a blender and out popped a communications degree, right? And the York News Times, a former Stauffer newspaper, turned Morris, the company that owns us now and that I now work, I work for, uh, was just new in this thing called um, the World Wide Web, putting data and you know content online, hoping that people would read it and buy ads around it and maybe eventually pay to consume it. So they thought, well, you're the young college kid. Let's give it to you and see what happens. And so uh, I stuck with it. Uh, the World Wide Web survived. And people are still reading content online. And so that's kind of that transition. I want to go back politically and tell you about my obsessions. Because I think we share in some of those same things. So when I was in high school, I had an opportunity to intern for governor at the time, Ben Nelson of Nebraska, and later Senator Ben Nelson of Nebraska. And more specifically, we got to break off into different passion areas. In Nebraska, they called it the Department of Health and Human Services Protection and Safety Division. That is, I worked with systems kids that were transitioning from the health and human services system, foster care, into the real world. And by the real world, which probably was realer, less real actually than what they had experienced, we discovered that there wasn't a lot of transition that was available that the state provided where these kids had everything taken care of and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, be warm and filled and now go out into the world. So we worked with the Preparation for Adult Living program, PALS, to help transition these kids into the real world. During that time, I really fell in love with politics and I asked Ben Nelson, I said, you know, Governor Nelson, if I ever wanted to run for governor someday, what are two things that I would need to be mindful of? And he said two things, Zach. Now, this is in the mid-90s, so for the context of it. He said beef, and that is our international relationship in selling our agricultural products to China at the time. Beef, and the second thing he said was education. I thought, oh, this is pretty good. My mom was a teacher. I grew up in a teacher's lounge. This all makes sense. So, because uh, I'm crazy, at 21 years old, I had the audacity to run for school board. And this was a time that you would be choosing the new superintendent. We were looking at closing some of what we called the centers. That would be like this. Let's say that 501, the 501 was a school district, and even Shawnee Heights and Seaman and, and all of the surrounding county schools were actually all part of that. And we were going to close and just have that. So the new board would have to choose a new superintendent, decide what to do with the centers, uh, you were the recipients of a little thing called the Court of Industrial Relations, 
because there was some inappropriate RIF letters that were given out, 109 of them in fact, so we got to deal with that. I also learned that whenever the lawyer showed up, we also got to eat out. So that was good too. So we went through that process. And then they elected me vice president of the board. So I, I really enjoyed that, that process and that time. When my wife and I uh, were in college, and this is a true story, on our first date, one of our first dates, uh, York College is where, where I attended, and it's a private liberal arts college. One of the jokes is, ring by spring, or your money back. And so I thought I'd make a mockery of that, because I was clearly there to get an education and to gain my freshman 15. And uh, so my wife had given blood that day, and she's still teeny, teeny tiny, but she was really teeny tiny. She was about 5'2", 90 pounds at the time. Well, I think you have to be 100 pounds to give blood. So she gave blood. And I saw this as an opportunity for me to go and, and you know, court this beautiful girl. And so um, she gave blood. She was woozy. And I thought, well, she needs food and she needs a walk. So I offered to, let's go for a walk and get a bite to eat, get some fresh air. And of course, you know, she's a lame duck, and so she agreed to go with me. <laughs> so she asked the question as we were making a mockery of this ring by spring or your money back, what do you look for in a future spouse? And the first thing I said is I look for first lady material. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. And so, yeah. And so she's like, okay, whatever. And so when I ran for school board, and that all came about, and all the door knocking and falling through pro porches that were broken, and barking dogs, and forums and debates, and you're too young, and all that kind of stuff, I said, well, that's what she said. I didn't think you were serious. <laughs> so I was. Uh, and so one of the things I love about our business is the opportunity that we have to do what you're doing, and that is to educate and to inform people on their rights and also to educate them as citizens to be engaged and active citizens. I think you asked, asked for a topic, and I was in between emails trying to come up with something really fast. So I said, um, you know, the Topeka Capital Journal, we've got the butter. <laughs> How am I going to correlate this one? <laughs> so I want to tell you a story. <laughs> All right, so picture this, and some of you may have heard this because I think it illustrates things very well. Now we'll get into the deepers. If you can picture in your mind's eye one of those Washington, D.C., big wig, fancy, overpriced fundraising dinner events. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. I have eight top table. Picture an eight top table, everyone's dressed to the nines. And there's a young man, and I... With all due respect, we'll play that role, clearly. <laughs> okay. So there's a young man, and this young man comes, and he's got a little plate, little pat of butter. Then he goes around to each person's plate setting, around these eight top tables that are filling this room, giving everyone a, a, a piece of butter. Well, he comes up to this one table with a very dignified individual. Mr. Jack, can I... You're, you're no, the, sir. You're the victim. Okay, very good. I mean, you're the, you're the participant. Okay. <laughs> and so... I come up, and, and right here where Jack sits is this dignified, highfalutin, Washington, D.C. bigwig, ran for president. Half the buildings in that town and in their home state are named after them, and they make it clear in the big old diatribe of all their experience who they are. And then they make this one ask. They say, young man, I'd like another pat of butter. And the boy kind of takes a little step back and he looks at the rest of the room and he sees how hungry all of these other folks that have not been served are. And he says, sir, if you give me just a moment, I'm going to serve everyone else in the ballroom. And once everyone's been served, if I still have butter, I'll come back and give you a second helping. And the man grabs the boy by the arm and he just goes in and he starts reciting his resume. Maybe you don't know who I am. And he goes through that whole long list of things. And at this point, the boy kind of steps back again and he's probably more amused than he is annoyed. He chooses his words wisely. Mind you, a 16-year-old young man standing up to a Washington, D.C., very influential individual that wants more butter. <laughs> and he said, sir, maybe you don't know who I am. I'm the kid with the butter. <laughs> that even a Washington, D.C. big wig did not have that solution to his problem for that extra craving of calories in the form of butter. That young man held the position of power. And the question is, what does he do with that power, right? Mm -hmm. So the question would be, and I, I think of ourselves as the same, ink by the barrel, paper by the ton, right? We are in a position of power. 
what would you do if you had that power? To me, we would do what we've tried to do and to do it even better. We investigate, we inform, and we entertain so that you consume that content that you may not know that you need to consume. You all know it, but some folks don't know. They don't crave that, that content, that information. We hold people accountable, right? We're there as an advocate when we need to advocate and as one to nudge when we need to nudge. And that's what we do with our power, as I see it. The other thing people have asked is, what would you do? We talk about Topeka. Topeka is, is in a lot of transition. There's a lot of new leadership. I'm not talking elected leadership. I'm talking leadership of organizations, leadership of companies. You're seeing a lot of these changes. This class of people that kind of came in when I did uh, about a year ago, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing, right? And so the question is, what would you do? And people said, well, what would you do if you had all the power? I said, I do things faster. I do it systematically, but just like in our own operation, I would know this is something that I need to shoot because it doesn't work, right? This is a project or an idea or a concept, you know, or this is something we need to start. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, we move on. And if it does work, we continue to feed it more resources so that it can become stronger. So in that approach, I started in October. We have an amazing, amazing newsroom. Uh, you hear probably or in the midst of hearing some of the changes that are happening locally, right? The, the family in Lawrence sold the journal world to Ogden newspapers. One of the first things they did was hired 61 people. Uh, in other words, there were about 30 that no longer will have jobs. One of the changes that happened was in the newsroom, among many places. We are the only newspaper in the state of Kansas that have pumped resources into providing investigative journalism at the State House. We have three full-time reporters dedicated to the State House, and that's significant. When you see some of the changes that are happening in our industry, they're robbing from those, and they're having more feature writers, which is good. That's good to have feature writers. But to have the investigative people that might have to vet something and sit on something and analyze data and content and all this stuff, only to generate a few inches every so often, you don't get the return on investment, per se, because they're not spilling as much ink as someone that can generate things with more frequency, right? Because they're able to tell the story as it, it, as it unfolds. This is a commitment that, that we take very, very seriously. Now, on the other side, there's so much more we could talk about. I'm talking about the political side right now. As I was sharing earlier, we still cover over 90 prep high school sport, or prep sports teams. That's significant. Uh, we are continuing to grow our newsroom because the 24-7 news cycle continues. You think about some of the changes that continue to be made in our industry. There is no beginning, middle, or end any longer, right? Mm -hmm. There isn't. You know, now you're tweeting. You're sending something out on Facebook. You're putting something on our, our website. People are consuming our content 24-7. Um, a couple things I, I, I should have mentioned. I, I do want to acknowledge Thad um, Alton. Thad is an award-winning photographer. He's been with the Cap Drone for a long, long time. Also, and we're, we're fortunate to have him here and, and all that he does. And also, we have one of our interns with us here. And so she didn't introduce herself. And this is Emma. And Emma is uh, with us for about six more weeks. We have, I, I believe, about six, five or six interns in the building in total. Uh, one of the things I love about our company, I think unless you're taking credits through KU, because they don't allow it, uh, you get paid. I wish paid internships existed when I was an intern, but wah, wah, wah. I do have a great retirement plan through Nebraska. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. So uh, speaking of that, isn't this fascinating, right, what our political world is, is doing? So this is keeping us excited. Kind of like uh, being able to uh, appoint a Supreme Court court justice, you don't get this opportunity very often. And that was our opinion page editor. Fred retired, and so that left an opening, and I got to choose the process of who our next opinion page editor is. And there were different, there was different criteria that I looked for. <clears throat> Number one, do they know how to write? Well, that's important, right? Uh, do they know how to put the vowels and the consonants in the right order to make it meaningful? Yeah, that, that's important too. Can they present things balanced? Where you might read it and you'll say, okay, well, I completely disagree. That was, that was stupid, but it was stupidly intelligent. But I disagree. <laughs> Could they bring in diversity of voice? Do they understand Kansas? Are they from Kansas? I thought that was important, although I can't from an HR standpoint say I discriminate against people that aren't from Kansas. I didn't. I'm just making a statement. And so we found Matt Johnson. Uh, Matt uh, received an undergraduate degree from KU. Uh, in uh, political science, a master from KU in journalism, 
Uh, he's from Salina originally. Uh, some of you perhaps have had a chance to hear him speak. Um, pretty interestingly balanced, his family. Um, Governor Graves held a fundraiser on one side in his living room, and a Democratic candidate had a fundraiser on the other side. So I don't know if they just had really good snacks in a really good living room or what, but anyway, so there's some interesting uh, connections there, but very much a passion and interest. One of the other things that I discovered is that there wasn't a lot of diversity on our editorial advisory board when I came. I lowered the median age by about 35 years. <laughs> and really, they were great, they're great guys, but it was all the same. And there wasn't a lot of diversity of thought. There wasn't a lot of debate around the conversation table. So we've added that. We've added more ethnic, cultural, age, gender diversity to our board. Now, it's made for longer meetings. Um, and it's made for us to have to clarify certain things. For instance, and this is an important clarification to make, they are an editorial advisory board. What does that mean? We don't take a vote. Um, I just, I choose it. We, <laughs> we, don't, we don't take a vote. But what, what I wanted is a group of people that didn't think like I thought and that would agree and disagree with me that we could have this interesting conversation around the room. The other point that we wanted to do is we wanted to improve our engagement within, within the community that we serve and for our readers. So what we did is we meet each Thursday. We opened up the last half hour of our meetings to invite people to have the opportunity to come and speak. And the agenda is theirs. They can present as they want. Part of it is just to educate us. Sometimes we'll write an editorial in response to it. Um, the other thing is we tried to really be um, intentional on what the balance of content was as far as world, national to local. And so generally, the goal is 50% is local, and local can be Shawnee County onto your you know, front doorstep, uh, and 40% state and about 10 national world. If we do write on a world or national issue, what we try to do is then tie it into how it pertains to Shawnee County, as an example. So those are some changes. You'll also see that there's more guest columnists that we've tried to invite. One of the things that we're also doing is when there's an issue that we are talking about that we've determined is important, education, health care, you know, certain topic areas, what we try to do is have a phone a friend, so to say, that we know can articulately speak or write uh, on this issue on the other side so they can try to be balanced. In other words, if we know that it's going to happen on this topic, we're going to have the other one on the other side. An example of that, at the end of February, the beginning mark, I can remember this because I kind of measure lives by Sundays as, as this ran on a Sunday, uh, Governor Brownback and, uh, came into my office to present some of the numbers. This was as, again, some of the estimates were off. And, uh, and so he, he, he presented them and I saw the printouts of the slides and I held them up. And, <laughs> and they didn't seem to be making sense. <laughs> so, um, but because I because I respect I respect our governor, I respect the office of our governor. Um, we said, well, okay, we're going to be writing an editorial based on what these numbers and what they're making out to be, and it'll run on Sunday. I want to give you a heads up. Next Sunday, equal audience, Sunday to Sunday, you'll have opportunity to, the space is yours, whether you want to refute, agree, disagree, bring up whatever you want, the space is yours. And I appreciate him and his office. They took us up on that, um, that offer, and they've done that twice. Um, my point to all this is, is we want it to be a place of educated discussion and educated debate, so to say, a forum for this. And so both sides, we try to represent as much as we can. I realize, you know, from my blender degree, if you will, of communication, that there are trigger words or words that we can say that don't intentionally mean what they meant when we said them, although we're in the word business. And so that's something we're always trying to be more mindful of. So that's, that's a big change. I've had a chance to speed date Topeka. Um, I was having three or four breakfasts a day, two or three lunches a day. That's the truth. And just getting to know and meet people. and. Uh, we like what we heard, and I like I like this place. Maybe during the questions, I can dive into any things that I've learned. I feel like it's been a sociology time of just learning how, how people work and think and and everything. One of the things that came up very simplistically was uh, when our veterans pass away, we didn't honor their service with an American flag and obituaries. 
And so some changes I could make really fast. That one took about 34 hours. And so anytime we lose a man or woman that, that's given their life young and then you know we're able to, to be blessed and live to an old age or whatever the case is, we do that um, for, for those men and women. So that's important to us. That was feedback that we got right away that we received. You know, there's other feedback that we've received that we've been able to implement pretty quickly. One thing that I have learned is we do really love our political coverage, and I think that's something that we do, do, that we do well. Um, hopefully you've seen an expanded political coverage uh, that we had just recently. Um, the Docking Institute data I thought was interesting. Again, going back to my conversation with Governor Brown, like, I like charts and graphs, so you have that. Not all the charts and graphs fit in the paper clearly, and so CJ Online has more of that content. We also had an election guide, and that was something that Thad was involved in that, that early morning which is late when you've got people that cover things 24-7. Uh, and so what we did is we wanted our, our candidates to come in and we took their portraits. We had a video where we shot their video where they're all asked the same questions at the same time with the same backdrop. Again, trying to make things as fair as we can. And then we gave an overview of some of our coverage and what our intents were. And then if they wanted to, they could talk to the, the advertising and marketing people as well. So that was uh, a separate but all part of this, you know, this breakfast that we had. It was very well received. I think we had 15, 16 candidates that came uh, out of about 30 that was in that scope. So that was pretty good. We've also uh, been able to be involved in forums, not debates, but forums, political forums. Uh, I think many of you, who, who all was there Tuesday? Yeah, awesome. So that was that was a, one of the events we got to participate in. There's another one that we're, that we're doing, obviously, for the general. And we're putting that together. We're also having a breakfast again for those candidates. Um, kind of talking about the process and, and all of that. So it's definitely been an exciting time. Uh, I think early on, you know, we tried to not assume too much. So we put together, I call it, well, like the, you know, windows for dummies, caucusing for dummies. I don't mean, you know, it's not, but basically here's the, here's the 101 on, you know, how to caucus and, and voting and trying to do those things. So a couple things I've thought about if I were governor, <laughs> very simplistically, and a newspaper guy at the same time, I guess that would be Arthur Kappa, right? Yes. <laughs> but a uh, uh, couple of things is, in this state, when I compare it to the other places we've lived, where have I lived? I'm glad you asked. I'm from Nebraska. I grew up in Columbus, about four hours from here, so I knew Topeka, and Topeka was on our short list, and we waited for Topeka. My wife was from Glenwood, Iowa, about two and a half hours from here. And we have lived Nebraska, Iowa, North Dakota, I can ask, I can tell you about questions about that too, with what a state did with a billion dollar surplus, but it was an oil boom. That was fascinating. The roads are really nice up there now, really nice. Uh, they have no money now. Uh, and then Ohio, lived down in Ohio. Arkansas, uh, the, now this is my third stop for newspaper turned Morris, so lived down in Conway, Arkansas, and then here. And uh, so we've been here about a year, and my kiddos, we were looking for a place we could settle. Um, as I said, we want to get through our kids' schooling, and. There's enough stuff here to keep me entertained for a long time. <laughs> and most of it is under the, the, the unpatinaed uh, dome. So, <laughs> lots of fun stuff. So I say all that to say, let's see, where, where are we going with this? So we talked about some of the election coverage. We talked about some of those different things. Um, events, that's the other thing we've done that's kind of fun. And so, how many of you were able to attend the Bill Curtis event? I know you were in Chicago. At the, yep, okay, good. So, that was a really neat event where we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Topeka, Topeka tornado in, from 66. And so, we brought Bill Curtis in, did a 112 page booklet. Oh, I was going to tell you what I was going to do if I was governor. Man, I'm already learning how to dodge questions, and I asked myself. <laughs> All right, guys, put that in the parking lot, as they say. <laughs> Okay, that sounded like a consultant comment. That's it. We, we do like studies here, and I, I don't want to offend anybody for that, but we do like studies in this, this market versus other markets I've been. Um, anyway, that's a whole other conversation when I speed dated Topeka. If I were governor, uh, in our travels, two things. Did you know that you don't have to print the ballot in the paper? Right? In some states I've lived, and I should have brought a copy because I, when I go visit, we just got back from North Dakota. I brought copies of the newspaper. We just got back from Minnesota. I bring copies of the newspaper because that's what I do. I, I love newspapers. And so we did that. And they print the ballots. They have to print the ballots. Here's your, here's your Republican primary ballot. Here's your Democratic primary ballot. Now, the order of them might switch, but they have to print the ballots. Isn't that cool? So you'll see people actually go in and they'll actually be able to, to analyze it and know ahead of time with a copy of their ballot. That is a state requirement. The challenge that our state has done, in my humble opinion, is this. We have done it where we make two things compete that should not have to compete. 
let me, let me ask it this way. So let's pretend that you're one of our county commissioners or you're one of our city council members or you're one of our school board members and you're trying to determine what, how we run the legals, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in the state of Kansas, it essentially boils down to this. Mr. or Miss elected official, do you believe in transparency or do you believe in fiscal responsibility? <laughs> well, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Right? So in other states, the state sets the legal rate. Oh. Ah, yeah. And it's an equalizer. Uh, it's based on the letting. Anybody know what letting is? Yeah. It's based between the lines, right? The, the letting, the font size, all those things. So the state sets the rate. And they have a criterion for what is a legal newspaper. It has to at least exist for a year. It has to be of general, pu general, broad public no uh, public information. I think some of them actually use that it has to. They use the postal requirements as if you were to mail it. That it has to have at least a paid circulation of 300, which is teeny tiny, but that's the standard. Kansas, pretty much. I'm oversimplifying this, but my church bulletin or a farm bureau newsletter could almost qualify as your legal newspaper. So, if I'm going for the cheapest, I can bury something and not worry about it, right? So we are trying to encourage to get the legals back, to which would pay for our printing and be able to, to include those, which I think would be very, 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 very valuable, as well as us putting on our website, which is outside of our paywall so that the world can see it, and I like it because it's archivable, so you can type stuff in. Right now, the way it's set up in Kansas, in my humble opinion, you're rewarded for being cheap and keeping it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I have a reporter taking notes, so I, I will stand behind that. So that's one thing I would look at, is our, is our legals. The other, the other piece that I would look at is a threefold rule uh, when I come into an operation as a publisher. The threefold rule is, number one, you don't embarrass me. Number two, you don't surprise me. And number three, you don't hold me hostage. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not making a political statement, I'm just saying no matter what party, can you imagine a system that operated under that? As Kansans, you won't be embarrassed, you won't be surprised, and you won't feel as if you're held hostage. Interesting, right? So those are the two things I would do, but I can't run because of my job, so I'd have to recuse myself from every vote, which I cannot do, and so I can have, I can have a lot of philosophy in that. So those are some changes that we've made. So I talked a little bit about the events, right? So one of the other things that we made is a lot of our print subscribers are on fixed incomes. Actually a lot. We're all on fixed incomes. It's just if it's really, really fixed or really not fixed. And so uh, one of the things that we changed is we used to give premium editions and you would have to pay more for that every time there's a premium edition. Well, that broke rule number two. You surprised me. And if you want our content, that broke rule number three because you have to, I held you hostage. You either want to be a subscriber or not. So all of those premium content pieces are now free. They're, well, not free. They're included with your subscription. Right? So in June alone, as an example, we did the 112-page magazine that was inserted in your paper. We even shrink-wrapped in case it rained that day. So your paper would be wet, but your nice Bill Curtis edition would be dry. <laughs> Number two, we came back and we celebrated the downtown revitalization, 44-page broadsheet, big old paper that was also inserted later in June. So that's another example. There are more of those that are coming um, that you're not charged extra for. So those are, those are also some changes that we've made. Um, there's so much more that I can talk about. One, oh, one question I get at, that I get asked that I might bring up, and then we'll open it up to questions and we'll talk a little bit more, is this. You know, you're a young guy, uh, so I ran for school board. My wife and I uh, formed a S Corp and we owned a subway uh, when I was working in the newspaper, so we've, we've done that. We would have done an LLC if we lived here, but uh, <laughs> we had an S Corp, uh, we had, we had an S -corp uh, in Nebraska. Uh, we own rental property still in Council Bluffs. We have three of them still because you can't sell them, but you can rent them. Can't sell them for a dollar, but I can rent them. So, so we still have rental property there. Um, I ran for school board. Um, interesting change of events. I worked on my Master of Divinity degree through Lubbock Christian, and I preached full time for two and a half years. Another, so there's a lot of background. So why newspapers? Why newspapers? Well, I think of it like this. When I was in the South, I became acquainted with a gal by the name of Paula Dean. Uh, Y'all you know, know Paula Dean? All right. So Paula Dean, of course, is the, the food connoisseur. But she, she doesn't cook savory stuff. She cooks sweet stuff. Well, she does a little savory? No, she's a sweet cooker. She has the butter. She's, oh, she's the butter. Okay, so you're helping me out. So here's my question. Some of you have heard this before. 
So Paula, I'm using an analogy to, to, to get the point. Gotta trust me on this. When I close my head, when I close my head, when my mind is closed, I do the best work. No. When when I when I close my eyes, I see numbers as words. I don't know if anybody else is like that. I don't know. But anyway, that's how I see. So I see analogies in my head. So I see word pictures. So here's the word picture. Okay? Paula Dean uses five basic ingredients to make everything yummy that she makes. Think about it, right? First one, butter. What's number two? Sugar. 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 Cream. 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 Flour. Flour. Eggs. Eggs. I'll take those. Okay, so those are our five basic ingredients, essentially, right? You take those five basic ingredients and you can make a 200 page cookbook on those five basic ingredients. You might add a little, you know, some, some pecans or some walnuts or some chocolate or some coconut or give me more good stuff, you know, might throw some good stuff in there. But essentially, it's those five basic ingredients. Here's the analogy. My business, it's the same thing. The newspaper industry is successful and why I choose to remain in it is this. We too have five basic ingredients. We have reach, that is you know, how far we disseminate our content, whether that be online or in print. We have frequency, seven days a week, 24 seven. We have audience, people who engage with us in different ways and in different technologies and different mechanisms. So reach, frequency, audience, brand. I talk, mentioned Arthur Capper. We have a legacy that predates Arthur Capper, right? We're one of the oldest businesses in the county. So we have brand and we have content, content. Right? Reach, frequency, brand, audience, content. You put those five basic ingredients in a blender and you have longevity for life because people will always want those. Those are economy proof. Those are money proof, financial proof. Those will always exist in some way. And that's what I love about what I do. You could be an entrepreneur. And you can create new products and solutions that meet the need of what people want using those five basic ingredients. Makes sense. And so when people say, oh, gee, newspapers are dying, well, a couple things. First of all, I'd say Warren Buffett isn't buying newspapers because he wants the tax write-off. <laughs> he bought one of my alma maters, the Omaha World Herald, which is a pretty fabulous newspaper. Um, and he owns newspapers all over the country. <clears throat> He understands that people will always have a craving for community journalism. And the community newspapers that do it right, that understand their specific role to investigate, to inform, and to entertain, will have longevity. And those that are the best at what they do will do it in a way that meets the needs of their audience in the way that they choose to consume it. That means if it's a digital platform, if it's you know like digital like this, digital like this, digital like this, however you consume digital, and if it's print. If it's print like this, or print like this, or just a single sheet print, they'll, they'll go with it. And maybe it's events. Maybe, it, oh, I'm seeing the Capitol Journal do some of these things. You know, maybe it's hosting the political forums. Maybe it's having Bill Curtis come back. Maybe it's doing lunch and learns. Maybe it's being, doing big community events. We can entertain, investigate, and inform through events. Right? And we can still serve some of that purpose through events and through bringing people together. One of the things that we're doing that, I, that I'm really excited about is our high school journalism project. Oh, this is cool. And so, as an experiment, anybody here graduate from Topeka High School? Okay? And because I like to investigate, what year did you graduate? What year? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so, so, back, so back in April, well, we had meetings, but starting in April and May of last year, we thought, wouldn't this, well, let me tell you how it all worked. So, I'm touring Topeka, right? And I wanted to see the cool Harry Potter school, right? That had that really cool building. So I went as an architectural tour, and I knew that the, the uh, principal was retiring, and so I wanted to go through. And so I ended up at the journalism room, and we're chatting and talking. I'm thinking, ooh, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, what's your distribution? Oh, a thousand. I'm like, ooh, wouldn't it be awesome if we could like put this out to everybody? Oh, that'd be cool. So we did. We printed it, and then we inserted it because I realized. Because I asked the question that the Topeka High School has about 40,000 emails in their database of alumni, and about 20,000 of them ish are still in the area. So I'm like, wow, this is really cool. So I'm going to be able to have their voice. Because remember, we don't have as many feature writers because we have all these other great writers that we're investing in. And so let the kids tell the story through their words. As a side note, it was neat because I mentioned Governor Brownback. And so they wrote a letter to Governor Brownback in their publication. Well, instead of it being buried under the feet of these high school kids across the halls, it went out to a slightly larger audience. <laughs> so that was really cool. And so then it was very successful. So then we, we met with the other high schools, and I can't do it everywhere all at once, but we're now printing like 56 um, issues of the school newspaper. So for example, Topeka High School, Topeka West, uh, Highland Park, Shawnee Heights, uh, Washburn Rural, Seaman, Silver Lake. I think that's 
all of them. I haven't gotten to Hayes and been there. I know there's some more county schools. I got to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So we've been meeting with the teachers and the advisors, and we're actually doing that. Well, we also had sit downs, which is really cool, taking these high school students, circling them up because we love conversation, we love to educate, circling up their desk and just talking about different things. And one of the suggestions that came up from a Scott. Anyone from Highland Park? Anybody graduated from Highland? Okay. So the, the, that intelligent thought came from them. They said, wow, we don't know any of the kids that go to the other 5-1 schools, or we don't know the other kids that go to the others. We might do a club sports team or do church or whatever, whatever, but we don't know these kids. And so we thought, okay, well, you're really cool, smart, great kids. Let's take a couple of you from each of the different journalism, and let's create another editorial advisory board, and let's do one giant project that we disseminate to everyone in the voice of a student. How cool is that? And so we're going to do that. So all of this is a lot of the transition of just speed dating the community and learning, you know, what's what's going on. No, please for the report, uh, I'm not speed dating students. <laughs> I'm engaging with students and speed dating adults. <laughs> all right. Anyway, concerning it the whole now it's getting dangerous. That's not bad. That's not legal, legal ease. Okay. So those are some of the changes that we're also making that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Just more engagement.